telling you guys why men are far more content with their lives than females. Why red pill aware men are much happier and much more content than any female in this country or really the Western Hemisphere for that matter. Men are happier than women, guys. Period. Point blank. Yes, there are plenty of miserable, depressed men. And there are women out there who are truly happy. But we're not talking about the outliers here. I, I very rarely talk about the exceptions to the rule unless, of course, I'm telling you guys, hey, the exception does not make the rule. We're talking about across the board, person for person, the average man is happier and more content than the average woman. If you were to assign a number that was directly correlated with the contentment and happiness of every person, the average male would score much higher than the average female. Let's go even further than that and say that red pill aware men are far happier and content with their lives than feminists. I don't think that's quite. Listen, there's no need to qualify or quantify anything here, guys. Feminists are fucking miserable and red pill aware men are not. That's the bottom line. Anyone who doubts this needs only to look at the number of females, the number of women who are on antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds compared to males. Now, there are studies out there that say one in four women are on antidepressants compared to maybe one in 10 for men. Then some stats out there say it's one in three to one to eight and so forth. But regardless of whichever study you give credence to, the results are universal across the board. More women, more females are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications, sometimes both, than men. And the simple reason for this is that men are happier than women. I'm going to give you the reasons why most men are far happier and content with their lives than most women. The first reason, our sexual peak is a lot longer than men. Women are the most sexually attractive between 18 and 28 years of age, give or take a few years in either direction. Now, during that decade, a female, any given female can sleep with and or get commitment from pretty much any man she wants. She can get attention. She can get dick. She can get money. She can get, per she can get provisions from just about any man she chooses. All she has to do is show up, put herself on a platter in some way, shape, or form, whether it be just her company, her body, her sexual, you know, sexual favors, and voila, most men are going to give her attention. Most men are going to give her dick. Most men are going to give her that commitment. Most men are going to give her those provisions. Now, as men, we are the most sexually attractive between the ages of 30 and between 45 and 50, give or take quite a few years in either direction. Our, sex, our sexual shelf lives are at least a decade and a half longer than a female's. But that's just our sexual prime, guys. Don't forget that we're also sexually attractive in our 20s. Granted, it's not quite as attractive as a female's sexual market value in their 20s, right? And it's not nearly, and we're not nearly as attractive in our 20s as in when we, when we hit 30. But guys, listen, there are men in their 20s still sleeping with beautiful women out there. Right? Listen, by the time I moved to Vegas, I was I was 30 I was 32 years old when I moved to Vegas. I fucked almost 18 women by then. Right? Now don't mistake me here, guys. I don't want to make any I don't want to cast any false aspersions here. I'm not saying that a man's sexual prime is better than a female's. Females may only have 10 years of prime beauty and fertility. But make no mistake, gentlemen, their beauty is far more effective than that of a male's. Listen, men will move heaven and earth to secure an exquisite female in terms of youth and beauty. Women, not so much, though some may, you know, cutely try if they're close enough to the wall. If a woman is close to the wall, yeah, she will move heaven and earth to get with a guy in his sexual prime, high value men. A given woman's sexual prime may not last as long as any given man's. But hers will burn much brighter, much hotter. The hottest female will always attract far more men than the hottest male will attract women by a long shot. Not even close. But the fact remains that as men, our sexual prime, our prime sexual attractiveness lasts 50% longer and even longer than that. And even before that, 
In our 20s, we're still able to fuck pretty girls every now and not at the rate in our 30s and 40s, but we're still able to do it. So even if a man doesn't get laid for the first time until he is 20 years of age, he still has at least a quarter of a century of peak sexual activity as opposed to 10, maybe 12 years for a woman. A woman's sexual prime ends very quickly and very abruptly. One day she's able to fuck any guy she wants, and the next, those same guys aren't paying her any attention unless she's dressed like a slut and throwing herself at them. And even then, they get rejected in favor of younger, tighter versions of themselves. Happens every day. Yeah, there are some 35-year-old women out there who are still hot, namely Devin. My girlfriend has managed to maintain her hotness. She's got the body of a porn star, but guess what? She'll never be as hot as she was when she was 24. She knows it, and females who are hot 35-year-olds, they also know it too. The second reason why men are much happier and much more content than women is that the more they accomplish, the less attractive they become. The more women accomplish, the less attractive, the less arousing they become. Women today are making more money than they've ever made in human history. They're more influential. They have more power than they've ever had. Now, this is exactly what feminists wanted. But what they didn't take into account was the effect that all of this money and power and influence would have on a woman's value in the sexual marketplace. And when I say sexual marketplace, I'm talking about a woman's overall attractiveness, attractiveness with regards to her beauty, her femininity, her personality, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, there's more than one factor, but you guys get the point. If she's not sexually attractive, we are not interested. I could not give two shits about what you have accomplished. But here is the raw truth, guys. And ladies, you need to listen up here because I'm talking directly to you. The more a woman accomplishes, the more money she makes, the more power and influence she acquires, the further she shrinks her pool of potential suitors. I'll say that again. The more a woman accomplishes, the more money she makes, the more power and influence she wields, the further she shrinks her pool of potential suitors. In other words, guys, the more status a woman has, the fewer men she'll have to choose from. Guys, I'm here to tell you, females don't want to downgrade. They want to upgrade. They want to fuck up. They want to date up. They want to marry up. They're not programmed to give the time of day to other men who have less money, less power, and less status than they do. It is simply not in their DNA, nor should it be. A lot of guys out here complain about, oh, you know, women should, you know, love men that are lower status. No, they shouldn't. Fuck that. Get your shit together. And by the way, conditional love, that is for the weak. Embrace the burden, the masculine burden of performance. Anyway, Donna, the executive at XYZ Fortune 500 company, she's not fucking the junior partner at the big law firm. No, man. Donna wants to fuck the guy with his name on the door of that firm. She's not going to date Steve, the warehouse supervisor. She's going to date the guy who owns the company Steve works for. Donna doesn't want to marry the company accountant. She doesn't even want to, she doesn't want to marry the COO. She wants to marry the CEO. Let's take it to a lower level. A female junior partner at any given law firm, she's not going to date, fuck, or marry a law clerk or a first-year employee. Not going to do it. Worst case scenario, she may date laterally and get with another junior partner, but that is the worst case scenario. What she really wants is the senior partner. Now, some women might say, well, there's nothing wrong with that, Donovan. She has to have standards. Hey, you're getting no argument from me. You're absolutely right. But here's the problem, ladies. The math doesn't work. You see, ladies, there are far more Steves out there. There are far more junior partners. There are far more CPAs out there than there are company owners, CEOs, and senior partners of big law firms. Then they might come back with, well, well, there are far more male executives and CEOs than female executives and CEOs, so there are plenty to go around for all of the powerful women. In fact, they'd have their pick of all of the most rich and powerful men in the world. Dead fucking wrong, ladies. Yeah, you got this part right. There are far more male CEOs and executives than females. But high-value men like this don't want to date female vice presidents. They don't want to marry these powerful and influential women. They don't want to fuck female CEOs. Why, you ask? 
because they don't want relationships with females who have masculine qualities or personalities. Now, some women might ask, well, how do you know they're masculine? They could be very feminine and ladylike. (laughs) How do I know? Simple. Because you don't become a senior partner at a law firm by being a feminine, kind woman. You got to be a fucking killer. You got to be cutthroat. You don't rise through the ranks of the corporate rat race to become an executive at a Fortune 500 company without being driven, without being ultra competitive. And any woman who accomplishes these things has to exhibit masculine characteristics. It's the only way. They have to maintain these characteristics over an extended period of time. And when she finally gets to where she wants, as soon as she reaches the pinnacle, she has quite literally forgotten how to be a lady. Yeah, she's still a female, biologically and and, and anatomically anyway. But all of her femininity has been stripped away from her. High-value men are not looking to be with a woman who acts like a fucking man. They don't want to be with a woman who has a scorned disposition from all the battles she's fought on her way to the top. They're not looking to get with women who can't turn off the bitch switch and compete with them. They're not trying to get with a female who's stubborn because she feels like she has to prove something all the time. Think about the typical cliche, pardon me, of the CEO fucking his secretary. His value is higher than hers. He makes more money. He tells her what to do. He has power and he gives her instructions. Somebody time out John John 4040 who says everyone needs a masculine and, and feminine side. Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Time him out. Get him out of here. Sharp assist Charles Caballero. Get that guy out of here. No, everyone does not need a masculine and feminine side. Fuck that and fuck you. Go fuck Donna, the CEO of the Fortune 500 company, and see how much femininity you get out of her. Anyway, back to the cliche of the CEO fucking his secretary. The secretary is in a subservient position. She does what she's told. She asks his permission. She never gets out of pocket. And she defers to him. The CEO secretary dynamic alone, guys, that is, a, that is conducive to attraction on both ends. This is why wives who are, this is why women who are married to the CEO of the Fortune 500 company who, is, who has the hot young secretary, guess what? She's worried that he's going to start fucking her. He's worried that he's going to get with her, and she should be. She absolutely should be. Women have been completely duped, gentlemen. They were told to get all this money and all this status and influence, and they'd be able to attract any man they want. But the more they get, the harder it is to find a man because the feminine operating system simply will not permit her to love and respect a man who is not superior to her in every way. She can't do it. But as it happens, it would appear that women are beginning to figure it out. The high-powered female attorney, she's pissed off, right? Because big-time male lawyers, they don't want anything to do with her. The female executive at the Fortune 500 company, she's miserable because she now realizes why she's no longer attracted to the men she used to make, that she used to be, men who used to make her pussy wet on the way up the corporate ladder. Every time she moves up a rung, guys who are equal to or lesser than her, they don't really do it for anymore. Sure, these ladies have all of the cars and all of the money, right? They've got all the friends. They can travel and buy pretty much whatever they want. But what they really want is a man. And at the end of the night, when she lays in her $8,000 bed with her 8,000 thread count sheets, she cries herself to sleep. Because she's just now starting to figure out that the more wealth, the more status, the more power, the more influence she has, the less men that she wants will want her. Her taste is too expensive for her sexual market value, and it will be until the day she dies. So what does Donna, the CEO of the Fortune 500 company, do? At the end of the night, she calls up her doctor and gets him to call in yet another prescription for Ambien to knock her out at the end of the night, Lexapro to keep her from committing suicide during the day, and Valium to keep her anxiety about being alone and 47 
under control. You think a 47-year-old man is that miserable? Spoiler alert, no. The third and final reason, well, the third reason that I'm going to point out, that most males are much happier, more content with their lives than most females, we accept reality, women don't. Now, this is especially true when it comes to red pill men versus feminists, right? Any man who takes and accepts the red pill, we all go through a series of stages before we finally come to the acceptance phase, right? First, there's the shock phase, right? When we, when, when we, first, cro- when we first come across something red pill related, we can't believe there's something out there that goes against everything we've been taught. Then, of course, there's the anger phase when we realize we've been lied to our entire lives and for a good long while we're pissed off at women. Perfectly normal. So long as you come out of it. Then there's the gluttony phase, right? Where you're consuming any and all red pill content you can find. You guys know what I'm talking about. Every, every few seconds you're, you're, you're refreshing your phone. You're grabbing at every YouTube video, every article, every blog post, every Reddit post. Anything you can get your hands on. You're like a crackhead. Gotta have your next hit. I've been there. Now, there are a few other phases in between, but eventually we come to the acceptance phase. We accept that women aren't what we thought they were. We accept that as men, we have every we have every bit as much to blame. We are every bit as much to blame for the sad state of women as women are. We accept that we as men, we have to have our shit together before we can start making demands of women. You can't be a fat ass talking about, well, I want my woman to be hot. Bruh, if you're a fat ass, guess what? You deserve a fat ass woman. We accept that the sexual marketplace isn't fair and that hypergamy doesn't give a single fuck if a man is only 5'9 and balding because he didn't hit the genetic lottery. Red pill aware men, we accept hard and fast truths no matter how uncomfortable, no matter how inconvenient they may be. We've accepted that in order to get what we want, we got to go and fucking get it. We've accepted that nothing's going to be handed to us. The world doesn't give a fuck about us. We accept that attractive women aren't going to be attracted to us if we're out of shape and undisciplined, guys. Females, on the other hand, have nowhere near the same mentality, especially feminists. Most women in this part of the world thinks that the world should be handed to them on a silver fucking platter for no other reason but that they have a set of tits and of a JJ. Women believe that no matter what they do, no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, that they deserve the very best men out there and what they have to offer, despite not offering a damn thing themselves. And no, pussy doesn't count. Pussy's a dime, it doesn't. Pussy's free. They don't feel like they should have to bring anything to the table but their company. That's it. The world tells them that no matter how grossly overweight they are, no matter how unattractive they are, no matter how slutty they are, that they have the right to the highest value men on the market and that anyone who disagrees is a misogynist. So yes, females are delusional to a fault, but here's why they're really miserable. Listen up, guys. Like Steve the Dean says, get your crayons ready. Even though the world fills their head with this bullshit day in and day out, they're starting to see it don't work that way. They're starting to see that they actually have to work hard to get ahead in life. They're starting to see that they actually, listen, they're starting to see the highest value and most attractive men marrying young, fit, feminine women who want to start families, who don't care about careers or sleeping around. They're realizing that as they get older, fewer and fewer people will tolerate their shitty attitudes and behaviors. They were told that if they go to college, fuck a bunch of dudes to get it out of their system, graduate with a useless degree, then go work in a cubicle cubicle for 30 years plus, that they'd be truly happy and fulfilled as women. Then at 37, they finally have that aha moment where they think, oh shit, Uh uh-oh, I'm at a dead-end job that I truly hate, I can't keep a boyfriend, I may have a drinking problem, and I can't stop crying at random times for no reason at all, I thought I'd be happy. But here I am at 40 years old and I can't figure out why I'm depressed. I'd better go see a doctor because there's got to be something wrong with me 
if I haven't found true happiness like everybody said I would. All the while, a 37-year-old man's aha moment is when he realizes that scheduling two dates on the same night with a couple of 25-year-olds isn't necessarily a bad thing. 